Hi, I'm Marius from MOS Photography, and welcome back to another episode of Digital Photography Today, the show where you will learn how to become the master of your camera. Today's topic is ISO, and we're only going to scratch the surface of ISO today, because when we look at shutter and aperture in a future episode, we are going to look at ISO once again. The purpose of today's episode, because we are still working in the program mode, is that we want to use ISO to eliminate camera shake. Okay, so what is ISO? If you look back to the film days, if you went into a shop and you bought a roll of film, you had the option of an ASA, it was called ASA then, of ASA 100, 200, 400, 800. Okay, so what's the difference between those films? It was also known as the speed of the film. So if you were shooting in bright daylight outside, you would put an ASA 100 film into your camera and you would take your images. Late in the day when it was more of a low light situation, it wasn't bright sunlight, you would maybe put in an ASA 400 or 800 roll of film because that sense, that film, that roll of film was more sensitive to light so the camera could get, the camera could gather more light onto that film than on the ASA 100. So because you were shooting in lower light, the camera needed to get the same amount of light onto that film so you bought a faster film or a higher speed film. Okay, the downside of using a higher ASA film was then obviously the image became a lot more grainy. So if you look at the older um, film images, you'll see an ASA 100 is more, is, is more clean than an ASA 800. Okay, now when we come to digital photography, it's exactly the same. You just don't have a film inside the camera. You've now got an image sensor that's fixed inside the camera. So now the the ISO that we are using now is exactly the same, but the cool thing is we can change it on the go. We don't have to take out a roll of film and replace it with a faster roll of film. We just change the setting on the camera. Good times. Okay, so when you, when you are shooting outside, the same principle applies. You can use, for instance, um, ISO 100 or ISO 200. The moment it becomes darker or you have less light, you just increase your ISO to like 800 or 1600 or even higher. Now the good thing about today's cameras, it's also got a downside. We don't have grain anymore, but now you've got digital noise. Now the older cameras really struggled with this, but the new digital cameras that come out are just getting better and better. Every time I see a new camera and I test the ISO, it just looks better. But still you mustn't shoot on the highest ISO of the camera because it looks terrible. Okay, so what we're going to do now before we use the Canon PowerShot and we do a practical exercise of how to eliminate camera shake, let's first take a look at the Nikon D3100. Now this camera has got a very cool screen at the back. It's got a, a nice way of showing you exactly when you choose your ISO. It's got little pictures there to show you this is the situation you must use this ISO in. So let's look at that quickly. Okay, when we look at the back of the Nikon D3100, you'll see it's got an info button right here. When I press this info button and I press it again, you're going to see it highlights there and I can choose the options here. I'm already on ISO, so I'm just going to press the OK. And then you can see it shows me all the ISO sensitivity settings. It's also got little pictures there. Now the pictures are really awesome because now if you're a be beginner, you can see exactly where you need to be. So ISO 100 shows you it's bright sunlight on these flowers. ISO 200, again, bright daylight scene. ISO 400 is a sport scene. Now, when you increase your ISO, you also increase your shutter speed. So if this is sport photography, then you will have a faster shutter speed, but I don't want to go into shutter speeds that much because that's for a future episode. So that'll be a good ISO. Just going to go back here to the ISO setting. ISO 400, ISO 800, you can see there a building with lights on and it's dark outside, it's nighttime. ISO 1600 is a piano recital. So you're not using any flash. You're shooting this straight from the camera without any flash. Here's ISO 3200. Again, you can see it's very low light. Uh, it's a, I, don't, I think I call it carnival or something. And there's, I'm just going to go back to ISO here. You can see there are kids riding on this pony thing or something like that. And here you can see on high one and high two, it's really, really very low light. And when, like I said, you're not using flash because a lot of the time if you use flash and I will show you when you take a picture now on the SX50, flash can really destroy your image. That's why you use ISO here and you choose the time of the day you want to shoot and then you shoot natural light. Now the camera is now on a tripod, but when we take the SX50 
off the tripod, that's where this ISA will become very handy. So let's take some shots of the SX50. I've now put the Canon PowerShot SX50 HS on a tripod. The purpose of the tripod is not to help to take the image, but just to keep the camera still while this camera is recording the picture on the L on, or this recording the LCD screen so you can see what the camera is seeing. Um, on that camera, I've just got an LED panel to light everything here. But in that corner, if you look on the LCD screen, you'll see there's a Christmas tree there. So that corner is pretty dark. That's where we're going to take the picture. Now, if you look here, right in the corner of the LCD screen, you'll see it says ISO 80. Now, that's the lowest ISO this camera can go to. Now, if I press the shutter button halfway for the camera to measure the light, you'll see it says here one and then two little dots next to it. That means one second. So if I take the image now, the camera will need to be still for one second. Now, that will definitely give you camera shake because I can't keep the camera still for one second. You'll also see it's got... Um, this red camera with two little lines at the bottom, it's showing you the camera shaking. This is to tell you that you will have image shake or camera shake. Okay, so if I take the camera off the tripod, I'm going to try to take a picture of this camera or a picture of this Christmas tree now, and I'm going to do it handheld. So if I take the picture, you're going to see it looks terrible. It's just lines, it's moving because I can't keep the camera still for one second. Okay, so if I put it back and I go to the ISO setting. Now, on the camera right here in the corner, there's an ISO button. Now, you, on your camera, this will be either in, if you've got a different camera, it might be in the menu, it might be on the camera body, it might be a shortcut button. Just go look in your manual to see exactly where on, you, where on your camera the ISO setting is. So if I press the ISO button, you'll see it's, it's got an option here called Auto. This is not the best setting to use because the camera will now decide for you what the ISO must be. But remember, I said earlier on that ISO generates digital noise. So if your ISO is too high, you've got unnecessary noise on the image. So it's always best to shoot the ISO as low as possible and only go to a higher ISO if needed. So that's why I don't really like the auto function. There are some... Um, times when you can use the auto to get some tricky shots where you need some assistance assistance from the camera but otherwise i do it manually myself i choose the iso that i want so if i go here to 80 that is the lowest iso that's where i had to keep the camera still for one second okay now i can increase the iso to 100 200 400 800 1600 3000 200 and 6400 okay now you might say Hey, wait a minute, why don't you just use the tripod and take the shot? Okay, fine, I can do it. If I press the shutter button down halfway, you can see there one second, I can take the shot, and you'll see the Christmas tree looks pretty good. If I go to the previous screen, you can see there it looks good. It's, there's no shake in it, but what if you don't have a tripod? Okay, that's the purpose of showing you ISO. What if you don't have a tripod with you? What if you are taking a picture of a person? You can't expect the person that's standing there to stand still for one second and then you must and then you want that image to be perfectly sharp okay so then it might have been better just to use flash on that person okay right so if you think well okay the tripod didn't work why don't we just use flash okay let's try that so i've opened up the pop of flash and i'm going to focus halfway the camera says it's happy i'm going to take the shot now that just looks terrible so now We've lost all the color of the LED lights. We've, we've killed the ambient light with the flash. That's why shots like this, you don't want to use your flash. If you take a, a concert and you take pictures um, like, like when I showed you earlier on the Nikon camera, that piano recital, that's why they say no flashes allowed. Not just that you're going to disturb the person playing on the piano. It's because the shots there will just look terrible anyway. You don't use flash for that. That's why those people who take those images have got expensive cameras, large wide open f2.8 zoom lenses, specifically for that um, job to take good quality images in low light. Okay, so the flash we've decided is a no-go. Right, so now let's use ISO and get the shot. So I'm gonna go to the ISO, press the button, and then I'm going to go to say ISO 800. Let's see what the shutter speed will be now. Okay, so now it says, uh, okay, that's more like an increment. That's zero and then the two dots and a four. I'm going to increase the ISO to 1600. 
and then we can see one fifth of a second. So now it's t still telling me that the image will have shake in it, but if, oops, I shouldn't have pressed the button, but if I keep the camera still enough, I should be able to get the shot. So I'm going to take the shot now at a fifth of a second, and there we go. And if I put it here on the tripod and zoom in, um, or just look at it first, it doesn't look that bad. And if I zoom in, it's not that bad at all. So the camera does have image stabilizer built in. But one sixth of a second handheld is a bit dicey, but I got it. I can even increase the ISO even further to say ISO 3200. Now the shutter speed is a tenth of a second. Okay. Now what I want to show you now is, I've, I know I've taken it on the tripod. I want you to have a look at what ISO noise looks like. So if I preview the image, when it's small, you can see it doesn't look that bad. But the moment you zoom closer, you can see it looks terrible. Okay, so now when you look on the screen, you can see two images next to each other. The one is shot at ISO 100, and you can see that the image, the blacks in the image is very clean. But when we take the image at 3200, you'll notice on that side of the image, you'll notice the blacks are very noisy. There's lots of digital noise in that section. And let's take it at, at ISO 6400. That's the highest ISO that this camera can handle. So if I go to ISO and then ISO 6400, and we take the same shot, I can take it off the, the tripod if I want to, I can take a handheld shot. So if I take this picture, and that's just, this is now at 1 25th of a second, and you zoom closer to this image, You'll see when it's small, it, it looks kind of okay. But if you zoom closer, you can really see that digital noise. It doesn't look that good. Okay, so where can this also become very handy? If you are maybe taking a picture of a person, uh, maybe you're, you and your friends are going out and you're at a place where there's maybe beautiful lights in the background. If you are shooting in ISO 80 or ISO 100, and you use the flash to freeze the subject. In other words, you're freezing, not freezing your friends, but the flash basically freezes the movement. So you're taking a picture of your friends and they are standing still. If you are shooting on ISO 80, you will find that your background will not look that good. It'll be darkish. The moment you jack up the ISO, you'll notice you'll see more of the background light, more of the ambient light in the background behind them. The image will look a lot better. Okay, so now in the previous episode, I told you that you can... Um, when you think out of the box, you can create something different. So, okay, so I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and I'm going to go to ISO 80. Now, when I take a picture of the Christmas tree, I'm not going to zoom closer and then I focus. The camera will just give me focus here. It's not being spiteful. Okay, there we go. If I focus on the tree and I take the shot and I turn the camera, we got all squiggly lines. So I'm just going to do a few of them. And um, you can create some abstract backgrounds for your computer like this. So just let the camera be at a lower ISO and then use the image blur and create something completely different. All right, so there you can see some interesting abstract lines by using camera shake. So camera shake isn't always bad. It can be used creatively as well. Okay, that's all we have time for for today. And like I said, we only scratched the surface of the importance of ISO. And we will look at it again in a future episode when we get to shutter and aperture. Okay, so if you have enjoyed this episode, I'm sure you have, then just click the subscribe button here. You know you want to. And then you will get the episodes as they come out. Then if you have a photography related or camera related question, then send it to askmwest at mwest.co.za and we will try to answer that question in a future episode. So that's all we have time for today and then I'll see you next week. Bye.